Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today we have ourselves a juicy update on Ripple and XRP. And even though the market is down 7.5%, I'm not really too worried. Let me know down below, guys. Are you panicking out of your crypto? Or are you still holding on fine? I've actually seen a lot of people say, you see, it's the bear market, all right? I've sold everything three months ago. I'm good. I'm chilling on the sidelines. And then a lot of other people were saying, I don't really care whatever the price is currently. I know the long term. And to be honest, the latter is kind of my opinion on the matter. I don't really sell a lot of my crypto. I'll just wait on for a longer period of time. Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that I have right now was also at one point worth a couple hundred bucks, for example, the majority of what I have now. So yeah, it's still doing really well. And a lot of the cryptos that I bought later, I just kind of think it's going to be a cycle. Even if they go down 97%, I'll most likely just buy a lot more. At the end of the day, though, it'll be worth a whole lot more if I wait long enough. It's not a certainty, of course, and that's one thing you should really understand. Cryptocurrencies have been around for about a decade and a half almost. It's not certain that it's going to be around forever. I just really honestly expect it to because of the technology and the thought process behind it. Having said that, it's not a certainty that a lot of these cryptos will come back up from like 97% declines, right? We also know that the majority of cryptos really don't. However, I like my odds. Specifically, if I have, let's say, 30 cryptos that are down 97% and I, I buy a couple of bottoms and a couple of them make it back up, yeah, the gains that I'm going to get on those is going to be so severe that it'll make up for a lot of the losses, I'm thinking as well. But yeah. All right, so our first small little update of today has to do with the SECV library case. So this is about their lawsuit regarding XRP slash Ripple, uh, but we have a couple other pieces that I think are really interesting. So, but this is first. If you hold XRP, pay attention to the SEC v library case, which involves many of the same issues as the Ripple case and will be decided first. So for all of you that do not know, SEC v library is another lawsuit that the SEC filed against another sort of crypto company called library. And the reason it's so important or why you should be watching this is because it goes over a lot of these same security issues. Now, they just recently filed for summary judgment yesterday, and Jeremy Hogan says it like this. The summary judgment from the SEC is its template and continues its strategy downplaying the uniqueness of blockchain projects. Very key concept, very key words, so to speak. The SEC categorizes or subcategorizes cryptos as similar sort of blockchain project or, I guess, really distinct. It, it just depends on your own definition of what the SEC would um or how you would conclude what they do. Because what the SEC basically does is they don't really differentiate between a lot of the different factors that go into a cryptocurrency project. For example, if it has uh, tripled the nodes, it might be just uh, over that threshold of decentralized, but with the current amount, it's quote unquote not, for example. It's just a hypo uh, hypo 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 hypothesis. Wow, there we go. <laughs> English is difficult, you know? Again, guys, not my native language. A lot of people say, oh, you can't speak English well. I see that in the comment section because it sounds a little bit, uh, the accent, you know, get judged differently, but it's okay. It's all good. Having said that, the library case uh, slash ripple cases will hinge on the ability of the judges to understand that issuance of tokens operating on a decentralized ledger is not just another way of raising funds and does not implicate the disclosure requirements underpinning the reasoning behind securities laws. I understand from the SEC side to try to allege this. Because if you remember, Ripple created XRP. Well, they didn't technically do it because Ripple was created after the XP ledger was created and after XP actually came into existence, but they gifted it all to Ripple. Now, so officially, some, some person might look at that and, and be like, you know what, officially Ripple didn't create this. So fundraising with that is kind of impossible because it's like the dollar was already there. Um, and just because my company was gifted dollars, you know, that's not how, it's not all of a sudden my security now, if you get my drift. However, that's an important factor. If the judge is unaware of how these systems work, they're not really going to look at what happened prior. They're just going to see, okay, Ripple has a lot of this XRP. They sold it under contract to some people. They're the majority owner in this. And they don't look at the fact that it's a decentralized asset and anybody can do anything with it as they please. And we could theoretically speak and stop Ripple from wanting any if we really wanted to, if you guys get my drift. It depends on their knowledge and understanding. And the library case is going to kind of put this up forward. We're going to see in this case here how knowledgeable the judge is, or also, I guess, how well the SEC can explain 
um, you know, the negative sides of it all. Once more, below is the motion for summary judgment. Do you want to read this? Well, it depends on, on what, you're, what you have to do your day. I don't think it's going to really matter. It's about the result, not the uh, specific points. If you're a lawyer like Jeremy Hogan, you might be able to deduce what exact points mean or, oh, this is like a... Um, template oh yeah we, we, we're gonna see this uh, uh the sc do this everywhere most likely i don't freaking know what they're gonna do next time i have no absolutely no idea once more key point being libraries offering meets the definition of an investment contract is what the sec keeps claiming because of the way in which they sold it which again the conclusion of that is going to be very interesting for um the ripple case as well this is the most prominent crypto case that's going to end earlier than the ripple case so you guys understand why crypto wolf said it really bothers me how the sec doesn't delay anything in this case against library because they're not losing like in the xp lawsuit which is kind of funny as well and uh let her ripple said i thought there were four prongs in the howie test what's the game with this and here they use three. Um, let us quickly check this out. Maybe it is so that you have to only meet three of the four Howie test prongs. Not exactly sure about that. I've been reading up a little bit, but uh, I, I can't know for certain the reason behind that. Somebody said maybe they can only prove three, so that's what they're asserting. Before I forget though guys, I'm not sure if I said it at the start of the video, we're doing a 2500 XRP giveaway, and if you want to enter, all you have to do is use the link down below and sign up for any one of these methods, you can either just visit me on Instagram or whatever, it's really really simple to enter, so make sure you check it out, and having said that, this is a very critical part, make sure you press the like button on the video if you enjoy them. Alright, regarding Ripple, again, we have a very small update, Brad Gullinghouse, the CEO, said he spoke alongside New York City Mayor at Milliken Institute yesterday about how the influx of crypto talent plus capital is transforming cities and states like New York City, Miami, Wyoming, California, who are seeking to create a welcome environment for innovation despite the lack of a federal framework. There's a really key point that can be fetched from uh, meetings like this and, and talks and thoughts about this. If you guys remember correctly, we know that um, Ripple set up, I think, a company in Wyoming, right? But more importantly, they're, they're headquartered in California. We're seeing that in the U.S., the majority of these states are actively getting more and more towards crypto. Now, partially, I think this comes with the territory of trying to win. And you always got to be, at, at some point, basically advocating for something which the majority of people would want. And that could be crypto thing. So from the mayor perspective, I cannot call if that's sincere or, you know, just trying to win, but I don't really judge. I'm talking about every single state in the U.S. or city, I guess, major cities. They're trying to work towards adopting this crypto because they see the potential in it. Texas is going really heavy on the mining, I believe they, they are. New York City and Miami are, are trying their best to... New York City is kind of a slippery slope because New York itself is really, really kind of strict on crypto. But the New York City mayor is really positive towards crypto. Miami, of course, is right now kind of like a crypto hub, it seems like, with Bitcoin 2022. Bitcoin 2022 also being there. Brad Gunninghouse said the support and pro-innovation stances of local mayors and state governors has been absolutely instrumental to bring in droves of talent from Wall Street and big tech, and they are reaping the benefits. Yeah, they can understand and they can see where the majority of the money lies, and understandably, they're, they're not really being too hesitant about it, even though the U.S. state, you know, like the whole country, doesn't really like it. All right, then Lear Zeit Stevens shared this. Look at this. Ripple was also invited to Hinman's speech and gave their presentation on cross-border payments before his speech. Who bets that XRP was supposed to be mentioned in the SEC's part? Can you imagine how awkward this whole situation must have been? Hence the moderators. So we're seeing here, fixing cross-border payments by Corey Johnson over at Ripple. He was this chief market strategist, hosted by Dan Roberts. Um, can we, can I, why can I not scroll anymore? Uh, guys, oh, there we go. Not sure what that was supposed to be about. Um, and then we have at the bottom here, software behind blockchain by Joseph Lubin, co-founder of Ethereum. Remark, that's surprising that he didn't say anything about Ripple. It, uh, we also have Will Hinman, of course, giving that speech specifically back in 2018. It's really interesting to me, if you look back and kind of start thinking about the fact that XRP was not mentioned, but it was thought about so much and was discussed so much, I still kind of wonder. A lot of you guys were saying, the SEC, of course, does not want to give over any information because it's a lawsuit. And I understand what you're saying. But once we'll remember, the SEC is supposed to help investors out. And with the way in which they are doing things, people in the U.S. are just kind of confused. And Ripple's also like, well, if you really knew and if it was so obvious, why didn't you just say it at any one of these points when we met up or when we asked you? 
Again, I am honestly thinking Ripple would be fine with any one of these assertions saying it's a security or not, whatever. But just warn them, give them the update, give it out there for the public and name call, literally. Why am I saying that? Well, name calling is literally the easiest way for people to make a distinction between what is good and what is bad. If Bitcoin and Ethereum are good, ICOs are bad. Well, where's the middle line? What, what, what else? What, what? There's not only Bitcoin and Ethereum. And in the next video I have, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this because we have a couple of thoughts that I really want to share about this. For example, the fact that Coinbase keeps listing a lot of these shit coins, but that's fine. However, if they want to list something like XRP, which theoretically speaking is a lot more trustworthy. Oh, no, no, no. You can't, can't do that. You know, can't do that in the US. All other countries in the world, fine, fine, fine. US, no, 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 no. You can't do that. It's, it's really interesting to me, but it, it goes a little bit further than that as well about this little line between Bitcoin, Ether and ICOs, because that's basically what they've given us. Uh, but even then, Bitcoin, Ether are also not steady fast. It's like, meh, we think that's good, but nobody really knows for sure. Having said that, that was it for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll be back later today with another crypto update as there's a lot of interesting things happening in the crypto space right now.